I'll be back with that story after this message. Hey guys, Mac here with Whoops Ass. All right, we're getting into the fun stuff now. This is called the filter stage. We're going to speak about developing a lead maturation criteria. We're going to attempt to take all these awesome MQLs, marketing qualified leads that we developed from suspects up here. And we're going to attempt to now go through a filter of sorts of qualification. This is kind of the quality assurance stage, if you will, where your business development teams are going to collect, whether it's marketing source leads or sales sourced outbound uh, leads and qualify them into a, an agreed upon, a mutually agreed upon SQO. So lead maturation criteria, we're going to develop sales qualified opportunities, put them into our active sales pipeline, and then the real fun stuff begins. So there's two parts of any filter stage in general. I'm not going to get into the specifics on how you should qualify a lead. I don't agree with doing that. There's so many different variables that go into the type of lead, depending upon your industry, depending upon your product, how they're sourced, what your strategies are up here. So I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to go through a, a framework of some core principles though, that should help you in your effort to create a lead maturation criteria, a nice filter stage. So once they come in, the two parts are solution qualification that needs to take place and the evaluation or buying qualification, buying process qualification that needs to take place. Solution qualification are the why and the what. Why are they here? Why are they entertaining a conversation about your product? What's their winning story? What are their buying motivators that I've used? And then the other part of that is what are they looking to buy? What sort of track are we going to take them down? You may have a deep product mix to where you have to sort out uh, either one product or a collection of different products. This is where you're starting to kind of put that together. What will be the economic impact? What do they have as far as incumbent solutions that we may need to, that your SaaS solution might need to integrate with at some level? whether it's a database integration on the back end or some other higher level or deeper level of integration. So these are some of the whys and the whats that you need to qualify on. Then the buyer valuation process qualification is now that we've realized that we have a marketable solution and that there's something that we can sell, a track that we can put this prospect on, to help them evaluate how are we going to get to the end game of SQO and then all the way through to closed one, right? You're just thinking about this. You may or may not share some of this with the prospect through the qualification, but you need it internally to kind of think about it. Your business development team person that's leading this filter stage needs to think about that. So that way on the other end, once it becomes an SQO and it gets handed off to the sales lead or in most cases an account executive, this can be communicated. Here's why and what I think that you know we need to position with them. This is what brought them in and why they're here. And then here is a little bit about the decision making process the path to signature. You know, this person is an influencer. They're not necessarily the economic buyer. If you're familiar with the medic terms of qualification as well, this follows a lot of that. They're not necessarily the decision maker, the person that holds the purse strings, but this is what the, this is the path that I imagine we need to go down uh, with them on. But just kind of think of it as two buckets, solution qualification, you need some, some bullet points there in your, in your objective sheet, your script, if you will, to qualify on. And what's the buying process path to signature? Now, down below, you also need to think about, is it mar a marketing source lead? Did it come through on an inbound? Uh, you may have a different filter stage or different set of, of qualification criteria for marketing sourced versus sales sourced. The best example of that is when it's coming in on the inbound, you can simply ask them what enticed you? What, what did you see? What was the shiny object you saw uh, that led you to us? And then on sales source, you're actually reaching out to them so they didn't come to us on their own will and self-select. But you know, what convinced you? What is it that you know, said, you know what, I'll entertain exploring further. I'll agree to explore further. Well, what was that? 
If, if the business development rep can articulate and communicate this well, and it's well documented and noted in the call notes to the account executive, then that's going to facilitate a good pass or a handoff of that marketing qualified lead to a sales qualified opportunity. Make sense? Okay. Last but not least, I have a couple of tips that I want to share with you. When you're putting this together, it's going to look like somewhat of a checklist or a call objective sheet for your business development team. From a coaching and training perspective, the number one tip I can give you is make it conversational and do it with a smile. Have it be natural. The same way I'm talking to you right now. If you guys are familiar with Dave Sandler, the, the pain funnel, uh, that's a very good talk track, if you will, to use here where you're just kind of asking, you know, what is it that you're currently using? How, why is it broken? Um, have you tried to fix it? How did that work? How is it impacting you? How is it impacting the rest of your business? How long has that been a problem? Yada, yada, yada. You don't want it to feel like an interrogation. And again, this all comes with good training, interpersonal skills, in, in the approach that's taken by the business development rep to turn what would otherwise sound like an interrogation or feel like an interrogation into a, a, a very valuable conversation for the prospect. The last tip that I want to share with you guys, and this is about the process, this is more about the, the training and, and the conduct, but around the process is let it flow. Um, don't create an approval gate or staging, if you can see what I've written here. I've seen in the past a lot of people wanting to, okay, once it gets here, we'll go ahead and let the business development person hand off to the account executive. And I recommend also tip number two, um, a handoff call, a warm handoff. Let your business development rep, at least in the first five minutes of that appointment that's set, kick it off, warmly hand it off, if you will, to the account executive, but don't allow the account executive to, to then determine if it's qualified and, and have first right or refusal. That doesn't work. If, if you do this well and set this qualification criteria well and get everyone to buy into it, and these checkbox are checked off or 80% rule, uh, you might incorporate that into your process. If it's, if it's satisfied, then there should be no argument from the receiving account executive. And when you do that, even if you let the manager or some middle manager be the gate, it just creates unnecessary conflict. Just agree upon the process. And if the box is checked, then the box is checked and the AE is accountable from that, that point forward. I'll get into more of that later. I'm not sure if that all that babble that I just threw at you makes, makes sense, but don't create a, an approval gate uh, of any sort other than the process that you're laying, the qualification criteria that you're setting forth here in the filter stage, in the lead maturation criteria. All right, guys, as always, I'm Mac with WhoopSass, and I'm always down to have a conversation if you are. Let's get to a better place together. Talk to you guys soon.